I have this sense that the whole digital world is about to change. Perhaps it's got something to do with Windows 11 crumbling beneath everybody's feet. Perhaps it's folks are waking up to the reality that proprietary software is a weapon that's being used to manipulate, coerce, and harm us. Social media being an instrument of psychological warfare against its own users. Perhaps it's something else. But it seems people are realizing that big software vendors cannot be trusted. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Meta, and Amazon. And I've witnessed this sea change on Reddit. I've heard more and more folks asking about how to install Linux, which distro they should choose and why. There are a few things that you should consider when you're deciding which distro to use. What do you need to do with your computer? What hardware do you have? And are you going to be running Windows alongside it? Your answers to these questions will inform which distro you select. And don't worry, I've got recommendations based on the most common answers. Now, what do you use your computer for? If it's creativity, if you use like the Adobe suite, for example, stuff like Photoshop and Illustrator, there aren't really great drop-in solutions. And I suspect that this is the reason many folks don't make the switch to Linux more readily. There are excellent alternatives, but none of them are simple one-to-one -one replacements. So it's not only going to be a hurdle of learning a new operating system, it's also going to be learning new productivity software. And if those obstacles come between you and doing your job, well, then it's understandable why you might be hesitant to give Linux a shot. Now I'll have a dedicated section at the end of this video all about the alternatives for desktop software. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk about productivity. Now, if you use the Microsoft Office suite, then you should have no issues here. LibreOffice exists, and it's a nearly one-to-one -one replacement for Microsoft Office. There's also Office 365, Google Drive, and self-hosted options like Nextcloud that deliver stellar support in your browser. And browser support between Linux and Windows is 100%, so you're not gonna have an issue there. Now, if you're a gamer and you've got a library on Steam or GOG or Epic, you're in luck. Most games will work pretty much as well, if not better on Linux than they do on Windows. The huge, and I'm talking like giant asterisk here, is if you play an online game that goes out of its way to prevent Linux users from playing, then you're gonna have a bad time. Titles like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and others, where the developers have deliberately blocked Linux players for dubious reasons. They just aren't available. But there are a bunch of other online games that do have support. Marvel Rivals, Counter-Strike 2, Helldivers 2, Sea of Thieves, Halo the Master Chief Collection, and many more will work just fine on Linux. And thankfully, there are resources out there that you can use to help you make the switch. If you want to check out if your favorite game works, you can use areweanycheatyet.com for the latest information. You can also use protondb.com to see if your favorite game is going to work. Now, I talked about web browsers a little bit already, but the major browsers are here on Linux. We have Chrome, we have Firefox, and even Edge. They're all available and offer complete feature parity on Linux as they do on other platforms. So you have nothing to worry about when it comes to the web. There's also Gnome Web, which is based on WebKit, and that's kind of a drop-in replacement for Safari. Now, the next major question is what hardware do you have? Now, my recommendation for NVIDIA GPUs is to stick with something like Pop! OS or Linux Mint. The differences between the two are going to be mostly aesthetic. Look at these two screenshots. This is Linux Mint, and this is Pop! OS. Choose the one you prefer and go from there. Now, if you've got an Intel or an AMD GPU, you have many more options. Pop and Mint will work just as well, but AMD and Intel have much better driver support on Linux than Nvidia does. So you could choose something like Fedora or Manjaro. You'll notice that Fedora here and Manjaro here look fairly different. This is because by default, they use different desktop environments. Fedora uses Gnome by default, and yes, it's pronounced Gnome. Meanwhile, Manjaro here uses KDE Plasma. The secret is though, you can pretty much get away with any desktop environment on any distribution. As PewDiePie pointed out in his recent video, it's one of the most fun things about Linux, customization. But that means that in reality, when it comes to picking a distro, the biggest difference is not the desktop. Nope, instead it's all about how you get your software. Coming from the Windows world, you're probably going to be used to going to a website, downloading a .exe file, installing it, and then launching the app. While that's considered normal in Windows, it also completely boggles my mind. You're just gonna go to some random website, download some random executable, and run it? 
That is bananas to me. I, I just don't understand it. You know what else is bananas though? The fact that you haven't subscribed to this channel. If you're enjoying this video and you wanna see more stuff like it, you can get subscribed. I have content that I've been making twice a week for 10 years. And if you guys wanna check it out, you can get subscribed. Instead of downloading random executables through a web browser, on Linux, we use what's called a package manager. Software packages are installed via the package manager, and these packages are created by the distro maintainers themselves. This gives us an extra level of confidence that the things we are installing are on the up and up. And most distros have their own package managers. Fedora uses DNF, Mint uses apt, and Manjaro uses Pacman. And the big differences here is that a Pac-Man based distribution is going to tend to have newer software versions than DNF based ones. DNF distros in turn tend to have newer software than apt based ones. Now this is of course a generalization, but I have found it to largely hold true. The result of this though, is that apt based distros are usually the most stable and have the greatest longevity. So if you want something that you don't really need to update that frequently, then Pop! OS or Linux Mint will be great for you. Feel free to pause here and check out this handy table I've created for you. And do note that SteamOS is currently only officially supported on the Steam Deck and the Legion Go S. Now, very few of these options will be a simple drop-in replacement for your existing workflow. You might get close, like if you're coming from the Windows world, KDE Plasma might provide the closest experience in terms of desktop usage, but there will be a learning curve. Keep in mind that this is largely by design. The developers of proprietary apps like Photoshop want to keep you a prisoner, I mean a paying customer. With that in mind, they deliberately and continuously make their apps harder to switch away from. This means that the sooner you make the switch, the easier it's going to be for you. If you use Adobe Photoshop for your work, there's going to be a few alternatives. Krita is the closest that I have personally found to a feature-rich alternative. There's also the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, which is stable, robust, and recently had a large update that should make it a little bit more familiar for Photoshop refugees. Now, if you're coming from Adobe Illustrator, my personal favorite vector editor has to be Inkscape. While the workflow compared to Illustrator is dramatically different, it is a capable and not to mention standards compliant vector editing application. The sooner you learn how to use Inkscape, the better. If you've been editing in Adobe Premiere for a long time, do yourself a favor and switch to DaVinci Resolve. Truthfully, this is not open source software, but there is a no charge version of this Oscar winning software, and it is so much better, more stable, and more intuitive to use than Premiere. It's what I edit all of my videos on, and it works on Linux. And let me tell you truthfully, it's to the point where Premiere feels like a toy in comparison to DaVinci Resolve. There's also open source alternatives like Caden Live, which is great. It's what I used on this channel from 2014 until 2021. But Caden Live is missing a bunch of features that most Premiere editors are going to want. Uh, so with that in mind, you can try both and pick which one you find most appealing. But DaVinci Resolve is my personal weapon of choice as a professional video editor. Now let's talk about Adobe Audition. There are a few alternatives to Audition on Linux and the most popular one is going to be Audacity. And while it gets the job done, I have found that its UI and UX is clunky at best. Ardor is another option, but it's more of a digital audio workstation rather than an audio editor. Finally, there's Oaken Audio, which offers a similar interface. Like it feels very familiar if you're coming from Audition. And it's also closest to what I would consider the use case of something like Audition. But it is important that I mention it is not open source. And it doesn't seem like it's had uh, many feature updates recently. Finally, let's talk about 3D design. Blender is an amazing award-winning 3D creation suite that can do most of the things that other 3D design software can do. Granted, sometimes the interface can be a bit obtuse, but it is just as powerful as the others out there. With all that said, I'd love to know your thoughts about what distros people can try out first. Uh, keep in mind that if you're new to Linux and you try a distro and it doesn't really feel natural to you, there are many others that you can give a spin. And I will say that my personal favorites at this point are Fedora, Bazite, and Linux Mint. I think that they provide a really great user experience. Uh, and then also options like Manjaro with KDE Plasma uh, are like bleeding edge Linux distros that have a fairly good uh, user experience for first time Linux users. 
And I would say, give them a shot. You can install these ISOs in a virtual machine and uh, try them out. Keep in mind, virtual machines often aren't as performant as running it on real hardware. Uh, but you know, find one that you like, give it a spin on, on real hardware, and then try different ones if that's not really your flavor. Um, part of the fun of Linux is being able to customize it to your heart's content. And that's why I am such a huge fan. With all that said, make sure you get subscribed here because I'm gonna be talking about installing a distro for the first time on your computer in one of my upcoming videos here. I wanna thank all of the fine folks over on Patreon, my ghost blog, and my YouTube members for their continued support. You can see their names over here. If you wanna help this show grow, you can use the links below to become a member of this channel. Uh, it's all greatly appreciated. That's gonna do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.